Okay, hi there. Welcome. It's Jeff here again with another labor market video, but this time linking it to the, the, the key issue, the important issue of relative poverty, one that we cannot and must not ignore. So let's spend a few minutes together uh, looking at some of the key policies that might be introduced to reduce relative poverty, but also give you lots of application data in terms of what's happening in the UK economy at the moment. Just in terms of definitions initially, so we know what we're talking about, the most commonly used relative poverty line in the UK and other countries is set at an income of 60% of median equivalised disposable household income. So income after tax and benefits uh, is disposable income, equivalised meaning you adjust for household size. So the income of somebody who's childless, for example, is probably lower than the household with a large family would need. And median, of course, is the middle value in the income distribution. And we set the relative poverty line at 60% of that. There's also something called deep poverty, which is households with an income below 50% of the median. And also keep in mind that relative poverty is not just about income. It's multidimensional. It goes beyond income. Consumption levels, uh, risk of falling into debt, uh, exposure to homelessness, vulnerability to losing your, your, your home, gaps in healthy life expectancy at birth. Multidimensional poverty is something that's a brilliant topic, a concept to introduce into a poverty discussion. And not just the depth of poverty, but also the duration, the persistence of relative poverty is also crucial. Can people lift themselves out of relative poverty over time, for example? In terms of the data for the UK, looking at the percentage of individuals uh, in relative low income in the UK, all the, way, all the way back to 1994, you can see that actually there has been gradually a fall in relative poverty in the UK. And that's, that's kind of backed up by data on the Gini coefficient. Um, before housing costs, uh, the figure in blue, after housing costs, takes into account things like housing rents, mortgages and so on and so, on and so forth, and essential bills. So there has been a fall in relative poverty. But the scale and depth of poverty in the UK is essentially undeniable. So according to the latest data, and, I, and here I'm drawing on the, the important work of the Joseph Rowntree Foundation, the JRF. I'll post a link actually in the comment section of this video if you want to explore further. So this is the jo uh, Joseph Rowntree Foundation annual report on poverty. And they found that more than one person in five of the UK population is in poverty. 14.5 uh, million people, of which 8 million are working age adults, over 4 million are children, and 2 million are pensioners. Britain has one of the highest rates of child poverty of any European country. One in three children live in relatively poor households, and uh, those households with uh, large families, with three or more children, face a disproportionately higher risk of poverty. There's a big regional variation. North East, West Midlands and Yorkshire have the highest rates. And crucially, and this is a point I want to stress, around two thirds, just under 70 percent of working age adults in poverty live in a household where at least one person is in work. So one of the big issues that I think it's definitely worth being aware of and, and building into your exam answers is the concept of working poverty. People who are in work, they have a job or sometimes two jobs sometimes three jobs, but yet they're still classified as relatively poor. And uh, I mentioned here that poverty is multidimensional. It's not just about income. Here's some data published in The Guardian about the gap in healthy life expectancy between the poorest and the richest. Um, girls born in the poorest areas of England will have almost 20 fewer years of good health compared to those in the wealthiest. This is uh, a measure of material deprivation that's published each year. Huge gaps. And uh, welfare sometimes makes that worse. Uh, one of the most recent welfare reforms was the two-child policy, which limits welfare benefit payments to the first two children born to the poorest households. Um, and that's actually had quite a significant effect, particularly, obviously, for families which have a large number of children. So here's the data, uh, and there's a lot of data here, so don't worry too much about this. I just want to pick out this bit for you that uh, poverty threshold in the UK is 60% of median. So, for example, if you're a lone parent with two children, then an annual income of below 17,900 would put you below the poverty line. If you're a couple with two children, 24,200. 
For an adult with no children, 8,700. A couple with no children, 14,900. And you can express it in terms of pounds per week. Okay, so how, you know, what strategies, what policies can be brought to play um, to try to reduce relative poverty? Assuming, of course, that this is one of the aims of macroeconomic uh, and microeconomic policy. So the main policy instruments for changing relative poverty, if a government's committed to it, are government spending, including welfare, and also the, the impact of direct and indirect taxes. Now, have you revised all of that? Indirect and direct tax is really quite important. But other policies are also significant, including jobs policies, employment initiatives, housing reforms, and regional policy. And a really key point, particularly if this comes up on a synoptic paper, is that you know, clearly relative poverty affects people at the level of the household. It is you know, a tremendously important issue. But macroeconomics also affects relative poverty. And you must be aware, surely, I'm, I'm sure you are, superb economists watching this channel, that the 2022 cost of living crisis in the UK is probably going to lift poverty in the next couple of years, particularly with food and energy prices surging as they are. So what kind of policies might be introduced to reduce relative poverty? I've picked out eight for you. Let me just say a little about each and then we'll evaluate. Minimum wage obviously would be a key one. If you get a question on this, most students would definitely choose the minimum wage as a way of reducing relative poverty, targeting low-income families with people in work. Uh, you'll know the minimum wage has gone up to £9.50 per hour as of April. The government hopes to lift the minimum wage to 63% of median income by 2024. Keep in mind, of course, that's above the 60% threshold. So if you have a job, full-time equivalent job, on minimum wage in a couple of years' time, in theory, that lifts you out of relative poverty. It's designed, of course, to improve work incentives. I'm not going to go through all the economics of the minimum wage with you tonight and today. Safe to say there are lots of videos, of course, on the analysis and the evaluation of the minimum wage on, the, on our channel. Regional policy, quite important. The government's identified, I think, some like 12 enterprise zones, which provide uh, some tax advantages of, of companies setting up in those areas. Free ports worth exploring. Uh, they don't all, by the way, appear on the coast. <laughs> And also a uh, policy of moving some civil service jobs out of Whitehall, out of London, towards the regions to try and, as part of their levelling up agenda, uh, whatever that means. Welfare reform, quite important. The government favours, this government favours more means testing, which means that you, you try to target welfare based on household income. So you try to give more to those who need it most. So moving a little bit away from universality, such as the state pension, and more towards mean testing of benefits. And of course, for pensioners, pensioners, pension poverty has actually come down in the last 15, 20 years. The government, of course, has this triple lock on pensions, which basically tries to lock in what, what the, the real value and the relative value of state pensions. Employment initiatives is important. Getting people into work, reducing long term unemployment, reducing economic inactivity. So, pathways out of poverty start really with a reasonably well-paid job. So things like the new T-levels, government-funded industry placements, the Kickstart programme for getting young long-term jobless back into some form of training or work. If you can make those policies work, and of course many policies aren't very effective, but if you can get them to be effective, that can get more people into work. And of course that brings down the risk of poverty. Housing is a major cause of relative poverty. So you'll know there's a housing shortage in this country. You know that house prices are largely unaffordable to people on median incomes. Uh, and rents have gone up, of course. So the government has a target of lifting new house building. They want to get to 300,000 homes in a year with half of them affordable. They're trying to improve the accessibility of affordable rents. These are slow burners, but, but important. The government offers childcare subsidies. You can now have 30 hours of free childcare per week for 30, 38 weeks of the year. So that's quite a significant intervention, again, uh, to try to bring down the cost of, of, uh, of childcare and get more mothers into work. Of course, finding good quality childcare is problematic and you still have to pay for the extras, whatever, nappies and lunch and meals, and that can be a major barrier to low-income families. Benefits in kind, quite interesting. So benefit in kind isn't like a cash transfer like a welfare payment. It's basically what you get from 
you'll have access to the NHS or state education or other, other local authority services, including drop-in centres and free meals and that kind of stuff. So uh, benefits in kind can have quite a powerful effect in terms of supporting low-income families. But fundamentally, if you want to do something about relative poverty, you probably have to change the tax system. And the truth is that in recent times, there has been no change to the marginal tax rates. 20%, 40%, and 45% are the tax rates. Yes, the tax allowance is now 12500 though that's now frozen. The government's also maintained zero VAT on food and children's clothes. They may well scrap VAT on energy bills in the, in the weeks to come because of the crisis. But there's been no fundamental change to the progressivity of the direct tax system in recent times. It's not being used as a, as a main strategy for reducing poverty. There we go. It might be worth taking a screenshot at this point of, of some of these policies. This is all great awareness, by the way. If you have this kind of knowledge to hand, you are in fantastic position to analyse and evaluate. Well, poverty reduction is under threat. We live in tough times, very tough times at the moment. And uh, let me just pick out five risks for you, five threats to relative poverty in the UK in 2022. The first has to be inflation. Now, you know, there's mixed evidence about the impact of inflation on inequality. Most economists would argue that there's a risk, a danger, that high inflation bears disproportionately on relatively poorer households. It also impacts on savers. The real value of savings goes down. But if you think about what's going up in price at the moment, food prices rising, housing costs rising, big utility bills, energy and gas, uh, electricity and gas, sorry, uh, water bills, the, the, the huge increase in the energy price cap in April with another one due in October. That is having an enormous potential effect on the real disposable incomes of households. And there is a big increase in fuel and food poverty, people having to make very, very tough choices. With inflation averaging 7% in 2022, could go as high as 10%. Benefits not rising by as much. So the real value of welfare is falling due to high inflation. Uh, we're seeing rising food bank use and more children eligible for school meals. And of course, with, with food costs going up, schools are under pressure to offer smaller meals to those children eligible. Housing rates continue to rise and so too are evictions and homelessness numbers, although that's quite difficult to quantify. And generally, of course, there's a fear of another recession. So we had one in 2020, pandemic induced, came out of it in 2021. There is now a genuine fear of a consumer recession because it's one of the biggest falls in real disposable income in, in, in peacetime this year. And of course, that threatens jobs, including jobs of people uh, on median or below median income levels. So there are some, some significant risks to relative poverty in the UK. This chart shows the number of people using food banks. I, I draw from this the, the, the data published by the Trestle Trust, which is Britain's biggest food bank provider. Huge surge in uh, 2021. That fall in 2021-22, by the way, was in part caused by the, uh, the lockdown in 2021, where some food banks essentially had to close their doors at times. But you can see the underlying trend. There has been a and a staggering increase in food bank use. Of course, more have opened, so more people use them, but we use that as some data. And likewise, a big rise in the number of children eligible for free school meals. It's risen by 600,000 since 2016. It's now 1.74 million children. And of course, there was this huge debate, wasn't there, uh, during last year when the government used voucher schemes um, for school meals, and uh, Marcus Rashford intervened to try to persuade the government not to to make those cuts to the uh, to the school meals budget. Big threats to poverty coming from uh, food price inflation. Some economists are arguing now that the era of gold, the golden era of cheap food, is coming to an end, from cheap eggs and cheap chicken and cheap pasta. Uh, cost of living crisis is in everybody's minds at the moment, and some some pretty Harrowing stories, really. I just picked this up from The Guardian a few days ago. A family struggling to cope with energy bills are seeking shelter in McDonald's, according to one charity. Well, I own the facilities as an emergency kitchen, bathroom and living room. Wow. This is a big issue, isn't it? Relative poverty, inequality. It's one of those topics that you can bring into many, many different discussions. And hopefully 
this short video, if you stayed with me to the end, has been a help in just lifting your awareness and, and bringing you up to date. Hey, huge thanks for joining in. I never take it for granted. Stay safe, stay positive, stay happy. Uh, please spread the word about our channel and uh, we'll see you again sometime very soon. Bye now.